Hey folks, welcome back. And as I promised, I was going to talk to you a little bit about my fish tank that I have here. Uh, so let's get started and I'll go over my custom made. Uh, it's a 50 gallon reef aquarium uh, that has a custom made sump stand and actually was something I bought off of Craigslist. Guy used to use it on his uh, 200 gallon tank as a frag tank on the side which would be pretty cool one day to have something that extravagant but it's just my it's a second reef tank that I've ever done I had one uh, about a decade or more ago that I loved and I got a new one here when I moved into my new apartment with my fiance and bought it for a hundred dollars off of Craigslist I actually had to redo the acrylic which I'll never do another acrylic tank probably again unless it's massive but they scratch easy I had to buff polish, redo the acrylic because it was all scratched up, and then I redid the stand as well. I sanded, repainted, re-actually did the inside of it with marine paint. That way it's waterproofed. But without further ado, I'll actually show you the tank and tell you a little bit about the evolution of what I've gone through, okay? So here to start out is the light setup. Here's the tank. Um, like I said, it's a custom size tank, which is perfect for a reef. Uh, it's about 30 inches wide and roughly 24 deep and only 18 high so you don't have to worry about the light trying to penetrate too much if anybody has a reef tank you know the struggle with lighting unless you have all the money in the world to buy the best lights out there lighting is always expensive uh, so the lighting setup I actually started out with these here these are the marine orbits um, I started out because I want to do LEDs on this tank because my last tank I didn't have LEDs. I started off with just those. Uh, maybe I'll be able to upload the old video. I have it on another one of my pages, but it's just these two light bars I have here. As you see, there's one in the back as well. Um, they started off, it did okay. It sustained the tank. It didn't let anything grow. So about, I'd say, three, four months ago, I invested in this. This is El Cheapo um, as an Odyssey, but you know what? For the price, I think I paid fifty or sixty dollars on eBay. It's got a fully, it's fully timed, uh, so it does the moonlight, lunar lights, uh, two sets of T5s for morning time, and then the T5s for during the day at that peak, which is what's going on right now. I only thing I did was I switched out the bulbs and I changed the arrangement, so. Uh, two sets of the bulbs now. I don't know if you can see them well here, but there's four bulbs in it. The two bulbs, I switched it so that it's the outside bulbs. They come on with my, uh, I have the ATI um, Blue Plus on it. So the two outsides are one of those, and then I have a Coral Plus and then an Itinic uh, that come on. They only run a short uh, several hour cycle the rest of them stay on longer but the cool thing is, is I kept the LEDs because the LEDs are actually uh, the reason I got them is because of all the different things they do which is not necessary for a reef tank I'll show you some of the stuff here in a little bit but they do thunder rolling clouds they do a full cycle with the sunrise sunset so I kept them so the tank does a full sunrise sunset still so in the morning uh, the sunrise starts it gradually picks up they get to their peak and then the itenics or the I'm sorry the blue plus come on. I run the blue plus for about two hours until about noon time and or just before noon, the coral plus and the itenic come on and then they all run for several hours. The two shut off and it keeps just the blue plus on and then those will shut off and it'll go into sunset mode. So pretty cool they do that. Uh, coral wise, uh, anybody that's had a reef tank goes through trials and tribulations. This stuff, as everybody knows that does this, is like wildfire. Uh, you could have a tank full of toilet water it seems like and it'd grow. As you see, it started off as an itty bitty little piece and it's just kind of gone crazy. So much that it kind of falls back here. And I've left one piece growing, but I actually have to take that stuff out and get rid of it. And I take it to one of the reef shops and see if they want it. They do whatever they need to with it afterwards. And this stuff, Xenia polyps, uh, they're starting to grow. For a while there, they weren't doing good because of the lighting situation. Uh, I was trying to see if you can see my clown goby. He likes hanging out in there like a little bird in the trees. I've got, of course, the skunk shrimp here, a uh, good cleaner. My mandarin goby. Uh, and you see my yellow wrasse in there. 
he's cool. He actually buries himself in the sand at nighttime. It's cool to kind of try to catch him do that. He'll just straight up shoot down into the sand, bury himself, and that's where he spends the night. You see one of my Bangai Cardinals back there. There's another one here as well somewhere. And then there's the Hippo Ting. There's Dory hiding out in the cave. And then back here, I uh, have a spotted goby. We call him Grumpy Gills. Uh, he just kind of looks grumpy all the time. But some of the other corals, star polyps, it's going to be started. I wanted to have that kind of just overgrown like it's grass and then uh, this frog spawn to kind of be like a little tree on top of it. And then this stuff, I just kind of threw those on there and it's kind of taken off like crazy. I'm hoping the orange ones do the same thing just to add some contrast. And then I've got a mushroom down here. It's growing, which will be really cool. It's orange and purple. And then Blastos. I can kill it with Blastos. My old tank, I did great. This tank, I do great. You can direct feed these things, which is really cool. Uh, you feed it some of the shrimp, and it'll actually just kind of grab a hold of it and bring it towards the mouth. And then you can see, of course, some mushrooms in the back. And we've got a torch coral. It's really pretty, actually. Now with these new lights on it that I did a while ago. Uh, it's got a really neon green center. I wish it would open up some more. You could see it. But it's got pink tips. You usually don't see them with a pink tip. They're usually uh, usually like a purple or something. But when the itinics, the itinic and the coral plus turn off, it's really pink. And you can see Grumpy back there. But yeah, this is about a year now. It's been up and running. You see, I've got my two pumps. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade, of course, the smaller one on the side to the larger pump as well. They do wave cycles for me. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then I'll show you down here underneath my sump. Um, I've got my, of course, my, I just took this off. That's the remote that controls everything. And, of course, I've got my refugium light, which I'll kick that on over here just so you can see it. A little bit of light down here, but refugium, some chato. It's a bunch of rocks and stuff. I got my oversized protein skimmer, which bigger but always works better just because it cleans. It's a cleaning thing. I can turn it down, I don't have to worry about killing everything, and then, of course, the return. I've got a pump for return. But yeah, that's the whole setup there. Underneath, of course, my dosing. Dosing calcium and pH alkalinity, just so everything grows. But yeah, that's the setup. And of course, I have the light uh, for the refuge set on a timer there. Uh, it comes on at nighttime, so my pHs don't swing too much. But I'll show you a little bit of the lighting i don't know how it's going to work with my t5s let me turn the t5s off see this is this is what it looks like without t5s on it just the leds but i'll come over here to the side and hopefully you can see some more let's see the thunderstorm i think the thunderstorm before when i did it it actually freaked out um i had a sailfin tang and it got stressed and it got ick and it killed almost everything in my tank. So I actually turned this off. I used to do it every day. I had a, uh, I think it was a 25% chance of weather. So it'd either do the thunderstorm or some rolling clouds, but eh, gimmicky. It's kind of cool. You got someone to come over to take a look at the tank and you can kind of do this. It's a neat thing to show. Um, let's do the rolling clouds. You can see a rolling clouds there. Just kind of sweeps the tank. It's neat. Like I said, it's not necessary at all. Uh, these lights, like I said, weren't enough for the tank uh, to do anything with. And, and to resume, there we go. Lights come back on. Like I said, the cool thing is the sunrise sunset. That's the reason I keep them. Uh, just because the sunrise sunset does help out. Uh, it doesn't shock the fish. Um, a couple weeks ago, I actually had that yellow wrasse take a flying leap out of the tank. Thank God I was here and I saw it. The kids were eating dinner and I don't know if something spooked it, but it just took a flying leap right out of the tank. But the same thing happens with the gobies and stuff. If your lights kick on all of, all of a sudden, like you see the T5s, how they just kind of kick on, uh, they do the same thing. It, if it came on instantly like that, they, they might take a flying leap out of the tank. So I keep on the other ones so they gradually pick up slowly in the morning. It just, you can see it inch its way up all day uh, and they go back down for the LEDs. So pretty cool. Just wanted to share this with you folks. 
Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I enjoy my tank. If you've got any questions and stuff, uh, if you have a reef tank, um, share it with me. I'd love to see it as well. I hope you folks enjoy your day and uh, click that like button, subscribe and comment, please. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I hope you folks have a great day.